In this video, I'm going to discuss this question. Suppose we conduct n independent Bernoulli trials, each with probability of success p. If k is such that the probability of k successes is equal to the probability of k plus 1 successes, then we have to check which of these following statements is going to be true. First of all, let's take a look at the information that's given to us. So we are given that we have to work with Bernoulli trials. Now you must know that in the case of Bernoulli trials, there are two possible outcomes. One possible outcome is success and the other possible outcome is called failure. And we are already given that the probability of success is P. That means the probability corresponding to this outcome is P, which automatically implies that the probability corresponding to this outcome is going to be one minus P as these are the only two possible outcomes that we have in the case of Bernoulli trial. Okay. Now we are given that all of these trials are independent and we are conducting n trials. Okay. Now given this scenario, I can define a random variable X. Note that this is capital X because this is the notation of a random variable. So I can define a random variable X, which is total number of successes in these n trials. So X is total number of successes in these n trials that we are conducting. Okay. Now see, given the information over here, we know that X will follow a binomial distribution n comma p where n is the number of times we are conducting the trials. So that is equal to n and p is the probability of success. Okay. Now let's see the other information that we are given. So we are given if k is such that the probability of k successes is equal to the probability of k plus one successes. That means probability of k successes implies the probability that the random variable x is equal to k. Okay. And the probability of k plus one successes imply probability that the random variable x is equal to k plus one. Okay. Because this is how I have defined my random variable x. It is the total number of successes. So this means that the total number of successes are k. And this means that the total number of successes are k plus one. And we are given in the question that these two probabilities are equal. Okay. So that means this is the information that we are given. Now we have to utilize this information to check which of these statements is going to be true. Now take a look over here. We have already discussed that in this case, if I define my X as this, then X will follow a binomial distribution. And these are the parameters. Now, because X follows a binomial distribution, we can directly use the probability distribution function that we have for a binomial random variable. So let me write that over here. So because X is a binomial random variable, the probability that X and this is capital X is equal to small X. The small X denotes any particular value of the capital letter X. Okay. So capital letter X is the random variable and small letter X is any particular value of this random variable. Now this is equal to N C X P raised to the power X one minus P raised to the power n minus x. So this is the probability distribution function that we have for a binomial random variable. And this is what I'm going to use to find these probabilities. In this function, n is your number of trials. X is the value that I have written over here. So this value goes over here. P is your probability of success and that is raised to the power x. One minus p is your probability of failure that is raised to the power n minus x. Okay. Now using the same function, this can be written as n c k p raised to the power k one minus p raised to the power n minus k. And similarly, using this function, this probability can be written as n c k plus one p raised to the power k plus one one minus p raised to the power n minus k plus one. Let's try to solve this further. So using the combinations formula, n c k can be written as n factorial divided by k factorial multiplied with n minus k factorial. This is p raised to the power k and this is one minus p. And now see, instead of writing one minus p raised to the power n minus k, I'm writing one minus p raised to the power n divided by one minus p raised to the power k. Okay. I can do this. I hope you understand this manipulation. This is quite basic. So this is equal to n factorial k 
के प्लस वन फैक्टोरियल एन माइनस के प्लस वन फैक्टोरियल मल्टीप्लाइड विथ पी इंस्टेड ऑफ राइटिंग पी रेशो दी पार के प्लस वन आई कैन राइट पी रेशो दी पार के मल्टीप्लाइड विथ पी रेशो दी पार वन एंड ओवर हेयर इंस्टेड ऑफ राइटिंग इट लाइक दिस आई कैन राइट वन माइनस पी रेशो दी पार एन डिवाइडेड बाय वन माइनस पी रेशो दी पार के प्लस वन ओके आई होप दिस मच इज फाइन नाउ लेट्स सॉल्व दिस फर्दर नाउ दिस कैन बी रिटर्न एज एन फैक्टोरियल डिवाइडेड बाय के फैक्टोरियल एंड आई कैन राइट एन माइनस के फैक्टोरियल एज एन माइनस के मल्टीप्लाइड विद एन माइनस के माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल दिस इज पी रेशो दी पार के आई एम कीपिंग इट एज इट इज वन माइनस पी रेशो दी पार एन डिवाइडेड बाय वन माइनस पी रेशो दी पार के दिस इज इक्वल टू एन फैक्टोरियल डिवाइडेड बाय के प्लस वन फैक्टोरियल कैन बी रिटर्न एज के प्लस वन मल्टीप्लाइड विथ के फैक्टोरियल एंड दिस कैन बी रिटर्न एज एन माइनस के माइनस वन फैक्टोरियल Actually, I've done a small mistake over here. I should not have written this factorial sign over here. This factorial should be over here. So it's the factorial of n minus k plus one. Okay. So it becomes n minus k minus one factorial. P raised to the power k multiplied with p raised to the power one. One minus p raised to the power n divided by. Now I can write this as one minus p raised to the power k multiplied with one minus p raised to the power one. Okay, now that I have simplified both the sides, let's see which of the terms can be cancelled. So this n factorial and this n factorial can be cancelled. I can cancel this p raised to the power k and this p raised to the power k. I can also cancel this k factorial and this k factorial. I can also cancel this n minus k minus one factorial and this n minus k minus one factorial. Is there anything else that we can cancel? Well, yes, this and this can be cancelled. Similarly, this. And this can be cancelled. So let's see what is it that we are left with. So on the left hand side, I'm only left with this n minus k in the denominator. So on the left side, I'm only left with one divided by n minus k. And on the right hand side, I'm left with k plus one in the denominator. So this is one divided by k plus one. And I'm left with p raised to the power one divided by one minus p raised to the power one. So p divided by one minus p. Okay. If I cross multiply, I'll get k plus one multiplied with one minus p is equal to n minus k multiplied with p. Now I have to solve this expression further to see which of the four statements that we are given is actually true. Okay. For the ease of the calculation, let me write this expression next to the question so that I could see all the options when I'm explaining this further. So let's go back and see the question. Okay, so this was the question, and let me create some space over here. The expression that we got was k plus one multiplied with one minus p is equal to n minus k multiplied with p. So let me open the brackets and solve it further, and then we'll take a look at the options. So this can be written as k minus k p plus one minus p, and the right hand side can be written as n p minus k p. Now, from both the sides, I can cancel this and this, right? So I get k plus one minus p is equal to n p. Okay. Now let's see which of these options is going to be the right option. So first of all, let's take a look at the option number one. The option number one says n plus one multiplied with p is equal to n multiplied with one plus p. So let's see if I could get this from here. So if I take this p on the right hand side, then this becomes k plus one equal to n p plus p. And now from the right hand side, I can take p common, and this is n plus one. So according to the expression that I have, n plus one multiplied with p is equal to k plus one. And the first option is saying that n plus one multiplied with p is equal to this. Okay. So clearly the first option is not the right answer because n plus one multiplied with p is equal to this, not this. So first option cannot be the right answer. Let's take a look at the second option. The second option is saying something about n p. So let's try to find what our expression has to say about n p. So as you can see over here, according to our expression, n p is equal to this. 
And this means that even option number B cannot be the right answer because according to option number B, NP is equal to this. Now there is no need to open the brackets and evaluate this because this expression can never be equal to this expression because in this expression we have K and there is no K over here. That means even B is not the right answer. Now let's take a look at the part number C. In part number C, they are saying that NP is a positive integer. Well, let's see if that is the case. According to our expression, NP is equal to K plus one minus P. Now, is K a positive integer? Well, yes, K is a positive integer. Think of it in this way that what is K? K is actually one of the particular values of the random variable X. Okay, we defined your random variable X as the total number of successes. Okay, now what are the values that this random variable X can take? The random variable X can take values zero, that means there were no successes, one, two, three, four, five, six, and this can go all the way up to N because N is the maximum number of successes that you can have when you are conducting a trial N times. Okay, so these are the possible values of random variable X. Now, if you want to have K successes, that means K has to be an integer. So you can have two successes, three successes, four successes, or something of that sort. So K is definitely an integer. One is definitely an integer, but now the point is that P is not necessarily an integer because P is the probability of success. So P can also be equal to 0.4. And if P is equal to 0.4, that means K plus one minus P cannot be an integer, which implies that NP cannot be an integer. Okay, so C is also not the right answer, which automatically implies that D should be the right answer, but let's check for that as well. So D is saying that N plus one multiplied with P is a positive integer. Well, according to the expression that I have, what is N plus one multiplied with P? Well, n plus one multiplied with P is equal to K plus one. And as we just discussed, K is a positive integer. And if K is a positive integer, K plus one is also a positive integer. That means part number D is the right answer. And that's it for this question.